So I got my carb kit in this uh, McCulloch 310. I'm gonna have to make a video on cutting some wood. I don't have any wood here. But I'll show you the saw. Uh, here we go. So I just want to give you guys a little update. That saw is working good. You can check out my other video on uh, how I restored it. Hey guys, it's Double Wide Six, and uh, I'm bringing you a little video. I had a request from Fenderman18. He asked me, "What tools do you need in order to do small engine work?" Uh, I'm not a small engine mechanic, but I do do a fair amount of small engine stuff in the garage And I'll just show you guys some of the tools that I have All right, so first of all you're gonna need socket sets you're gonna need standard you're gonna need metric you're gonna need all those sizes um, You're also gonna need all kinds of screwdrivers you're gonna need Torx. You're gonna need small ones big ones Phillips head standard all that stuff so you can kind of see I got a bunch of screwdrivers. You just need all that stuff. Uh, another tool that you'll need is a handheld nut driver. Um, a lot of times what I do is I use these type of drivers because I don't have to change them. So I got metric, I got regular. You're going to need all kinds of pliers, basic pliers, you know, for cutting, snipping, wire stripping, uh, needle nose pliers all that type of stuff. A utility knife for cutting. Um, wire connectors. Um, these forceps, you use them a whole lot with fuel lines. This is an impact wrench. I have uh, electric ones as you can see here. Um, I also have air pneumatic impact wrenches. Uh, I always write the dates on my batteries so I know when I got them and uh, that way uh, some, sometimes you want to use your better battery than your backup battery and once again long forceps these things are for reaching into fuel tanks to grab fuel lines some tools you can make on your own there's a little hook to get out fuel lines um, just basic tools uh, you know that's that's mainly what you need to do most jobs and there are some more specialized tools which I'll talk about a little bit later you're gonna need a good vise so this vise it's huge probably weighs 60 pounds I got it from my grandfather one of the best tools I ever got and uh, got a little tribute to my grandfather up there and uh, that's some some of his older tools I just kind of have on display you're gonna need some Allen keys I got standard I got metric I've got Torx um, by the way the Torx also can double up you can use these as metric Allen heads if you want um, I also have all of these uh, set up to be used with a socket or with an impact driver and if you have an impact driver you're going to get want to get these this is like a quarter inch this is a half inch this is a three eighth inch extension that you can tie your sockets right on to make things go a lot quicker in this drawer here I got my my half inch sockets I got an electric impact I got a air powered impact I've got uh, half inch sockets deep sockets you're gonna need deep sockets made for impact wrenches so I have metric and I also have standard in there more allen wrenches these are T allen wrenches work out pretty well easy to find you're gonna need lots of drill bits I tap lots of holes so you're gonna need a tap and die all kinds of drill bits be nice to have a numbered set and a lettered set so yeah all that stuff is used a lot wrenches standard metric all that stuff these up here uh, 
I'm not sure what they're, I, I want to call it a box wrench, but those are real handy, particularly for taking the main jet off of carburetors. Got some saws here, a couple hack saws. I got some coping saws. You're not gonna need coping saws, but the hack saws you will need. You're gonna need some good light. You can see I got fluorescent lights there. I got more fluorescent lights up under those cabinets. And uh, I also have lights up top, so good lighting helps. You're gonna need all kinds of gear oil, brake parts cleaner, carb cleaner, graphite lube, fluid film, all that type of stuff. So you're going to need lots of fluids. You need a pair of these cutters for cutting your fuel lines. You're going to need some files. You probably don't need as many as I have. But, uh, you know, you can sharpen chainsaws. You know, any rough edges that need to be filed. This thing, this is like a thread chaser. So, you know, all these tools are used time to time. You're going to want the red Loctite and the blue Loctite. Now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you would just want to have on hand. Supplies. Hose clamps. You want nitrile O-rings. These uh, grease fittings and grease guns. Keyways. Springs. All that type of stuff. Uh, you're going to need string. Pull rope. You're going to want a whole selection of nuts and bolts. Hopefully you're more organized than I am. Like all these, these are all made for wheels on mowers. You're going to want a multimeter, wire brushes that you can hook up to your drill. Here's some more tools that are kind of specialized for small engines. So you got a spark plug, a feeler gauge, I use it for gap and spark plugs. You got some of these little dental picks for removing o-rings and stuff from carburetors. Uh, spark plug remover wrenches, RTV sealant, this is a spark tester, different type of spark plug remover all that stuff you'll need all this stuff's kind of specialized it's all for punching holes and making gaskets so if you're in a jam you can make your own gasket uh, I also have uh, the cards that you put on people's mowers so you know whose they are and uh, you can give them the bottom part these are all drill bits taps and dies all that type of stuff uh, metric standard um, all the charts so you know what size you need to drill a hole and that type of stuff same here these are all metric they're all taps here's another full tap and die set it's a cheapie but I've used it a lot and this thing here compression tester use that a lot I keep a lot of parts so you know rather than just throwing something out I'll, I'll pull some pieces off of it these are all switches that are removed from equipment they work so I chuck them in here I have uh, some uh, valve grinding compound and these suction cup things to seat valves this thing's a valve spring compressor this is a, a valve compressor that I, I made myself before I actually had that tool and if you're going to be doing this crap you're going to want to stock some parts so I have you know bowl gaskets I got fuel filters for small uh, two cycle and four cycle and you know a lot of times I'll buy like a 10 pack at a time it's just cheaper I stock uh, flywheel keys primer bulbs you know you name it I got it so most of the most common stuff like here's some primers um, that you once once you start working on mowers you'll see the things that you need to replace over and over again and you'll kind of know what to stock um, same down here uh, you know more bowl gaskets I got I keep a lot of uh, two cycle carburetor stuff Walbro Zamba in stock I keep some of these carburetors that don't work I put little labels and put them in bags just so I know um, but yeah, that's basically what all that is. Down here, you know, got wire brushes, I, I stock spark plugs, um, these things, uh, 
handles. A lot of air filters. These are for uh, the Tecumsehs. Um, I have some throttle cables. Uh, more spark plugs. These are the longer ones made for the uh, uh, overhead valve engines. And then I, I you know, I stocked the the J19 LMs. These are pretty standard in most of your Briggs engines. These are fuel filters for like riding mowers. Um, you know, this is a, a blade hub. You know, th these are the types of things. If I have a blown engine, I'll, I'll hang on to these things. And, you know, that that one there is for uh, uh, self-propel. So and down in the bottom, got all my fuel line. Um, I have all kinds of boxes, of fuel line that you can use. Uh, a lot of it's two cycle. Some of it's for like the Tecumseh Snow King, the primer line. And then I run the uh, half inch fuel line, quarter inch opening, Briggs. I got some other stuff. Kind of looks like this. So that's basically what I keep in stock. Um, these are more air filters. Um, for the Briggs and Stratton engines. This is a specialized tool. It's used for uh, adjusting two cycle carburetors. Uh, I got that off eBay, I think. Right there is a pedestal grinder with a light wire brush. Great for sharpening blades, used all the time. You definitely want to have a grinder. You're going to want to have compressed air. You can start out small with something like a pancake compressor. As you graduate, you can go on to something bigger. But uh, you're going to want compressed air. And if you live in a cold climate, you're going to want heat in the winter. So I just put this thing in last winter. It's a pellet stove in the garage. Works awesome. You're going to want a grinder. I use the grinder all the time just for cutting metal or it can be used you know with a different wheel just for grinding welds or filing down stuff so I actually have two grinders so I don't have to switch the wheels they're awesome here's another tip I found out you're gonna wanna separate your metric bolts from your SAE so you know what's going on you know you can buy a nice storehouse if you want this is just all metric so if I ever need a bolt or a nut I can just pull it out of there this is a like pulley puller or it could be like a flywheel puller you're going to want one of those as well and uh, they make much smaller ones which are pretty good you might want a, a this one's a I guess a three jaw puller or two jaw puller works pretty good in tight spots and back in there hanging up on the wall is an electric chainsaw sharpener uh, I use that thing at least once a month if not twice just working on chainsaws here and there so they're really not that expensive uh, you know I didn't think I'd ever buy one but when I looked at the price and the amount that I use it it really made sense well you don't need a welder but if you get a welder uh, it'll help out immensely if you know what you're doing with it so that there's an arc welder and I just picked up one of these little wire feed things that's a welder too um, I'm still getting used to using it but you can really weld thin gauge metal with it so uh, it's kinda nice so if you wanted to patch something like a hole in the deck of a mower uh, you can use that and you won't melt through the uh, steel because the decks are so thin anymore you're going to want to get a truck so you can move some stuff like I just picked up this tractor the other day so you need a truck and you need ramps that'll help you out so basically the bottom line is you're going to need a fair amount of tools but odds are if you're if you're handy you probably already have a lot of the stuff the wrenches the sockets the allen wrenches and uh, you know a lot of the, the specialty tools 
you don't really need you can get by you know maybe just using needle nose pliers this and that um, and you know if, it, if it's something that you get into and you're doing more and more you can gradually buy some tools most of the specialty tools don't cost too much um, they're fairly simple and you know like a, a spark plug wrench isn't going to cost you too much so that's basically what I have and uh, thanks for asking it was actually a good question um, and here's my uh, cabinets I put in here they work out real good for uh, you know storing my tools and a lot of the tools I like to put up top where I can see them so I know where they are for the most part like my sockets and my wrenches and then uh, up top on my bench when it's actually organized I have everything going in that metal there and tools standing up so hopefully this uh, answers your question a little bit and if you have any other questions for me I'm double wide six and I have a whole bunch of uh, small engine repair videos and that type of stuff on my channel so check it out